think about this trip, how I got here. Um, and actually, that's, I think that's part of what you should know, how I came to the university, how I came to Knoxville and the university. I was looking at a job either at Berkeley, Cal Berkeley with Sam Bell, or I was going to Yale with Bob Gingengag, and I ran into the world's greatest salesman. <laughs> <laughs> and we talked about the possibility of coming this way because he said, why would you want to leave the state? Now you've made all these friends. Um, I don't know how Governor Buford Eddington got word of it, but he did, and he and I talked, and the rest is history. Understand, um, you heard that I grew up in, in Laurel, Mississippi, and went to Tennessee State. I want you to understand, when I came here, there were some very different feelings. Understand, I grew up in a time, 39 to, to 54, when the, when the South was very definitely segregated. Um, I never, I was always in a segregated environment. I went to Tennessee State, basically, I was still segregated. There were some white students, but for the most part, it was still segregated. Um, coming here, you have to understand, I'd like for you to understand that it was really a change for me. I came out of those two environments and came to the University of Tennessee. Now, I am in, I guess you could call it a minority, but I have to do something to make myself feel comfortable, and the thing that I, I dealt with all of the time, most of the time, was the sport that we now honor. I would leave the office coming to the track, whether I had a job or not, because I came to the track because I was comfortable. I knew these athletes. I had known Richmond and, and Pomfrey and, and, and Roger and so forth. But I came because this gave me a zone of comfort. and so. As I became more and more comfortable, I began to work on things and learn things. Um, it, it, was, it was, and let me give you this one, I think this is important, at least to me. It was so confining for me when I first came that every Friday afternoon, I would get in my car and drive back to Nashville because I was uncomfortable. Lo and behold, I met the Audrey's and the, uh, the, the James Craig's and the other African-American students and Jeff Gable, who Chuck Rowe uh, probably owes him an apology, and let me tell you that. Because <laughs> in 1967, I came here for a track meet, and I was really in good shape. And he put Jeff in the same event with me. <laughs> Jeff got crushed. <laughs> <laughs> I missed the world's record by a foul, so <laughs> Jeff got beat. But Jeff was a person who helped me, and, and we did things that, that made me comfortable. And as that, that, that level of comfort increased, then I found myself doing more and more things. I had parties, folks. I really had parties. Oh, yeah. and, and people came. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and I mean, people really came. And, and they became rather famous. You would run into someone at a track meet somewhere, and they'd say, we're coming to the dogwoods. Are you going to have a party? <laughs> and it happened, and it happened. And so, you know, it finally began to click. Uh, we formed an organization here on campus called the Black Faculty Staff Association, and that organization recruited students, recruited athletes, recruited, and tried to make this a more homogeneous society. And as we went on and on and on and on, and finally, uh, the thing began to, to, to make sense. Uh, I mean, at that point, it was wonderful. Um, the one thing I never did, I never became the coach that I wanted to. Um, there were some obstacles in the way, and those aren't necessarily to be discussed. But I never became the coach. But I can tell you, from the time I walked in here, in Knoxville, until the time I left the university, I was always greeted with open arms. And it was a great ride for me. The only thing I can say is, 
wish I had the opportunity to do it all over again. Because folks, it was really good. It was really good. And uh, thank you.